see what you see. Right. Okay, Saints. Don't know how this go. We have about a minute and we're getting rolling down this line. So please call a friend, call a loved one, get those devices that you need. Pencil, paper, something to write with that we're able to get into the word of God together. Please call a loved one, call a friend. All I'm asking you for, Saints, pleading with you for just 40 I'll break it down to 40 minutes of your time in teaching, and we'll take five minutes to, to do the things you have to do, 45 minutes, and you have the rest of your day to do whatever you please. So if you would, saints, gather yourself together, prepare yourself to be able to go into the Word of God with a mindset of expectation of receiving. So let me remove the distractions about who's in church and who's not. So saints, gear yourself up, gear yourself up, because I'm ready to pick up what we left off at in the studying the word of God and growing in God's word together. Okay, this train is getting ready to pull out of the station. And as we always do, saints, getting ready to go from the natural realm into the spiritual realm, what we want to do is go into prayer. And prayer is nothing but taking a natural, um, a, taking a natural outlook and taking it into the spiritual realm. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So let's pray, saints, and believe God. Father, we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. Oh, Father, I thank you and bless you because of who you are and for all that you have done and for the provision you have given us, Lord, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come before the throne of grace because it's nothing that I possibly could do to earn this, but it's your mercy, your love, and your kindness. And I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you and I thank you. Lord, I'm praying and pleading the blood of Jesus tonight that the saints of God may come with an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. Help them, Lord God, to put on their spiritual ears that they may be able to grasp and not allow any of your precious word to be wasted. And as the enemy goes on his offensive attack, Lord, and trying his best to take the minds of the people of God and have them distracted over something they ought not be thinking about or something, Lord God, that could be held off to a later moment. Lord, help the saints to stay focused for there's nothing more important than nothing that we're going to face that can come up to a counter, Lord, us knowing your word. So help the saints um, that we may stay focused on that which you set before us, Lord God, and the three categories that I break down of your saints, Lord, is one. To the saints that are right here, right now, help us to stay in the moment that we may be able to be focused to hear what you have to say, that we do not miss anything. Help us, Lord God, that we are not distracted in any way, form, or fashion or fall for the tricks of the devil. To those, Lord God, that are en route to get to a safe place where they are able to hear the word of God, I plead and pray. I plead the precious blood of Jesus, Lord, that you get them there safely. That we may be able to sit down together, Lord, and they may pick up, Lord God, right where they are when we get there, Lord. That we may be able to grow with your word into those that will not be here with us tonight for whatever reason. I plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, that you bless them. Watch over and protect them. Put it on their heart, Lord. Give them that urge that they may search out this page, search out this channel, and find out, Lord, what was said this night. That they may be able to grasp that and grow. Lord, I pray and plead the blood of Jesus that you keep us with that focused mind. That mind, Lord God, of trusting you every step of the way. So with that said and done, I right now of my own free will, give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over the message right now. Let him have his way and that he may exegete the word of God in such a way that even the most simple among us may be able to understand it, Lord God, and be able to apply it to our lives and grow. For this one thing we are sure of, when teachings are made simple, we are more apt to grasp it and apply it to our lives. So, Lord God, help us to remove away from the complicated, Lord, and the showboatness of many taking advantage of the word of God, trying to promote themselves. Lord, I humbly move before you and cry out to you, Lord, that you may be able to reach thy people. I give you, Lord, the power of attorney over this message. Have your way, Lord, and bless us that we may stay focused in the moment. For doing this for us, Lord, we are so careful to give thy name the praise. Now, this is a prayer we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, if you're in agreement with that prayer, say amen. 
Okay, now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be studying where we have been, guys, in Acts, the 27th chapter. And we're coming quickly to the end of the book of Acts. And I pray that you have been here with us as we have traveled this book and going through and studying and getting the, deep, um, the depths of what God has for us. Now, if you have not, go back. Um, go back and follow our thread on our Facebook channel or on our um, YouTube page and just go back and look at it and sit down and have the study with God for yourself. Listen. Bible study should be like a good movie that you love. You don't just ha um, look at that movie one time. So you don't listen to a message like this just one time. You're not going to get everything in it that um, God has for you. Trust me, the more you listen, you're going to hear something else that you didn't hear the first time. That God is going to continuously grow in you in his word. And that's what we want. For the word states, he that keeps his mind on me. So that would be just not the person. So what should we say, well, they that keep their minds on him, he should keep them in perfect peace. So what we understand God's word to say is as long as you stay focused on God's word and listen to what God is saying, that's everything you need, everything you will need to help you in any crisis that you may be facing. That is a mental crisis, a physical crisis, a financial crisis, or a spiritual crisis. No matter what it is that you're going through, if you focus in on the word of God, I give you my word, the word of God has an answer to deal with that which you're going through and dealing with. But what you have to do is lock in on the word of God and you'll find out the more locked in you on the word of God to hear from God, God will speak to you or deliver you out of that circumstance or situation. Now, we have Acts, again, the 27th chapter is where we have been, guys. Acts, the 27th chapter. And so, again, y'all know it by now, the ever, uh, ever popular slingshot effect. We're going to go back and just touch bases on that which we have been studying last week and come up to the new stuff this week because sometimes you haven't gotten a hold of your notes or you put them somewhere and you're trying to remember Again, you can go back and um, look at the page and, and pick up what we left off. But in Acts 27 chapter, we started at verse number um, 22 and we read down to verse number 26, which we were doing. We will briefly touch those and then go with new information. So the word of God says in Acts 27, 22, it says, and this is Paul, um, Paul speaking with their situation that they're in um, on a boat that's adrift in a bad situation. And it says, and now I exalt you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life amongst you, but of the ship. For there, for there stood, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, "Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer." For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. Now, what we was beginning to do, guys, and touch bases on a few things, and, and I try to keep notes a little bullet points that I can I can refer to that goes back and remind me of the um, information that that. I was given in the Bible study because I cannot retain all of this. I'm writing stuff down and I have access also to go back and study the word and look at this thing with you. So we found that in verse number 22, um, as we were studying, it says people, um, people mess up. We should lift them up. So it's not our job to beat a person down when they have messed up. They already know that they have messed up. God tells you that um, you should do unto others as you want them to do unto you. And when you have messed up or come short, you're already dealing with the shame <clears throat> and the embarrassment of that which you have done. You don't need nobody to come and rub it in your face. Okay. And verse 23, we said, don't be afraid to don't be afraid to let don't be afraid to let people know who you who your source is. But sin will cost you. And so again, we already tell you when it comes to Almighty God, boast on the God that you serve. Don't be obnoxious. But when God blesses you or when a person wonder about you and they come into you, tell them about the goodness of Jesus because that's what delivers you. You can just say it to the saints and, and it already sends you almost in a tizzy. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I thank God Mm. So what we do is you need to be able to tell people about the goodness of Jesus. And you ain't got to be super extra about it to turn a person off. But just let them know how appreciative you are, how God has delivered you. And we have always said when it comes to sin, you can choose your sin, but what can't you do? That's right. You can't choose your consequences. And so we said in verse number 24, because of your obedience to God, others will be blessed. And so you need to understand that 
Um, you just do what God say do. Say what God say say. Go where God say go. And when you where God wants you to be at the time that God wants you to be there, God will do great things through you for you. And you will be able to help people out. So your job is to just be always at the ready in obedience to obey God's word. And you will see that God will do a phenomenal thing on your behalf. God will bless you tremendously if you just stay in your place. Don't say no more than you have to say. The word of God says a fool is known by his much speaking. So don't say much, guys. If God is not saying nothing, don't you say nothing. Just listen to a person if they're going through. Because sometimes our human nature, when a person is going through a thing, we want to be sympathetic to them or jump in and give them a comforting word. Sometimes God may not want you to say anything. Just keep your mouth shut and say, well, I will pray for you. You know, that's the way you do that. And again, in verse number 25, it says, um, speak up on God's behalf. Now, that's a very important thing, dear guys. Um, when you see the world is going to come after God and going to try to make him look or make you ashamed of standing before God, you got to speak up on God's behalf about what God has done for you. Now, I may not be able to say for certain what God has done for you. But I know what God has done for me. And you can tell people what God has done for me. But you can't tell people like me what God has done for me. So you need to tell your testimony. Because nobody knows that dark hole that you was down in. And nobody knows when you was at the edge of the cliff about to jump off. What you felt like. Now I may say you was at the edge of the cliff. But I can't say what you felt like when you was at the edge of that cliff. But you can. And so you need to be able to tell people what God has done for you. And be passionate about that thing because there are some people right on the edge of the cliff and when they see what God has done for you they are willing to let God do it for them too but the problem we have is so many of us go incognito and will not tell about the goodness of Jesus and if you don't tell about it God says if you won't cry out for me then I have the rocks to do it I refuse to have a person that don't know my God talk about the goodness of God and here I am a believer and won't do it you got a drunk going down the street with his bottle and look up and say, thank you, Jesus, this good wine. At least he can give God thanks for his good wine. But yet God has given you health. He has given you strength. He has given you a job. He has given you a house. He has given you help. He has given you all these things. And you can't even tell nobody about the goodness of Jesus. What if God renege on his offer and take back his health, take back his strength, take back his job, take back his house, take back his car? What would you say then? We are quick to give the devil his praise when the thing's going bad. It ain't never going to get better. Things always terrible. But then when God do his thing, we don't talk about God because we don't want to offend nobody. Look, I'm going to tell you, if it's left up to me, you're going to be offended right into hell. Because I'm going to tell the goodness of Jesus because he done it for me. And last but not least, guys, in verse 9, 26, we touch bases and says, what God, uh, what you, uh, What's got to happen has to happen. Remember, we left that off with that, guys. If it's going to go down, there's nothing you can do about it. Get on in it and let's go with this thing. If it's got to happen, let's got to happen. Crying about it is not going to fix the situation or the circumstance. It is not going to, if I have to wash a lot of dishes, sitting there looking at them, it's not going to get the dishes washed. Let's get about it. Let's get the dishes done. And the faster you start running some water and washing dishes, it gets clean. That's just a metaphor of saying, if it's got to happen, it's going to happen. God has already promised me, I don't care what dark hole I have to face in life. I'm one fond of saying, if God take me to the bottom, I'm okay when I'm with him. But it's something down there he wants me to see. So wherever God takes me, that's where I'm going. Amen. So now we're into new information, saints, and we're starting with verse number 27, if you will. Verse number 27. This is what the word says. Now, Paul is already... Um, got it going down on the ship. Now, this is some interesting stuff that I was looking at in this right here. Now, verse number 27. Paul is saying here, let me see. Okay, he's saying, the word, uh, word of God, Acts 27, 27. He says, but when the 14th night was come, and we was driven up and down, the, up and down in the atrium, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. So remember, guys, you need to understand the thing that is going here. The Bible is giving you a, a brief synopsis of everything that is going on. They have been 14 nights. Look at what he says. He says, but when the 14th night, the 14th night was come, that means for 14 nights, they was in this battle fighting for their life. 14 nights of anxiety, 14 nights of frustration. 
14 nights of aggravation, 14 nights of agitation. God, why don't you just get us out of this? You control the weather. You control all these things. Why won't you just get us out of this? Some things God will let you stay in and see, I, just to let you know, I can keep you in it. I don't have to bring you out of it. See, it's not about where you at. It's about where your mind is at. Because you can put a person in a tight spot with a broad mind and they'll be in a big place. But you can take a person and put them in a broad place with a narrow mind and they'll still be confined. So the thing you need to understand is Paul is sitting here and 14 nights these people have been at battle with the sea. 14 nights of no compass, 14 nights of not knowing where they're going, 14 nights of the fear, anything. See, here's the thing you need to understand. Now, let me show you something here in the word. It says, now, after again, but when the 14th night was come, as we was driven up and down in Adria, in the Adria, um, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Sometimes you can be in a thing so long, so long. You will take anything that comes. See, you've been waiting on God all this time. The word says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and don't lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. If God ain't say nothing, don't you do nothing. So the situation you have is you've been waiting on God a long time. There's been 14 nights of a raging storm in your life and God ain't said a word. Don't you think God knows where you at? If his eye is on a sparrow, do you not think his eye is not also on you? And so in the midst of it, you've been waiting. Who are you out there? You've been waiting on a mate for a long time. And now you think it's been long and you think you see somebody that look good. God says, sit still. He's not good for you. You've been waiting for a long time with this job. And now this job, they want to hire you and you just ready to jump at it. God hasn't said nothing. Now, it may pay you good, but it may cause you also to give up your ethics. Just trust God. God know when your bills are due. God know how to make this thing happen. So your job is to trust him and believe God every step of the way. This thing you need to stand firm on. Going up and down in this situation, you need to stir solid that even in the storm, God is with you. You need to trust him. So again, he says about midnight. It's been long enough, Lord. This is a new day I don't been in this. 14 nights, I don't know if they count that 14 at midnight, we're going into a new day, 15, I don't know. It says 14 here, 14, um, about, um, it says when the 14th night was come. And so you're seeing here, 14th night will come as we driven up and down in Adrian, God, um, about midnight, the shipmen. Now, I want you to see this because this is something God showed me. That it was very hilarious to me. Look at this. Now, 14 nights we've been in this mess. He says, um, the shipmen deemed that they had draw, they draw near to some country. We don't even know where we at, but we're ready to get out of this right now. Some of you don't even know where you're going. You're just ready to run and don't know where you're running to. You better sit still until God speak to you. Don't jump out of that thing until God tell you to move. Don't jump into that thing until God tell you to jump. But so many times because things have been a rough a little while, you may find out that you're jumping right out of a frying pan into the fire. It may be rough just for a little while, but God's got you. God's got you right where you are. So what you need to do is trust God every step of the way. Sometime hope don't come until the midnight hour. So you're looking at it, but you got to realize when you know God's voice, because what looked like hope could be a trap of the enemy. So your job is to trust God. And say what he say, say to do what he say, do. Who is God talking to out there? What are you about to get yourself into? Stop. Sit still. Get a friend. Let them pray with you. Let them cry out to God with you before you make this move that you're finna make. My God, you're in danger. You're in danger. Sit still. God is not telling you to sit still for no reason. Just be still. You don't have to move right now. I know everything around you saying, Lord, who are we speaking to here? I don't know who God is speaking to. I know it seems to be a jumpy time and you're ready to just get out and go, go, go. No, sit still. God's got you. The enemy don't even see you, but you feel he see you because you can't see him. But if you move, you're going to let him know where you're at. So sit still. God's got you. God's got you. So deep in the midnight hour. See, one thing about midnight, you can't see that whale. You cannot see that whale. That's why it says in the midnight hour, again, in verse 15, it says in the midnight hour, the shipman, ding, he thought, 
He so like um um deemed that they was they was they had drawn near to land. So he said, okay, I can see something. I'm not sure what I see. Well, you better make sure you um you can see it before you jump in it. Okay. And now um, 28, the word says, now listen. So he thinking he sees something. So this is what he says. He says, and sounded and found it 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it to be 15 fathoms. So what he is saying is, I think I see some land and I'm not sure. Now, here's the situation where you got to trust God because land means you're on solid surface out there in that sea that's tossing and turning you. So what he's doing is he's paying attention. He think he can see a little land there, but here's the problem. And he began to give up uh, pretty much, if you will, the ping to find out where they at. Okay, we're 20 fathoms out. And then they go a little further, 15 fathoms. Yes, it's land. But when you're close to land, you have to be very careful. Because you're also coming up on rocks. And rocks can tear you apart before you get to the solid ground. It looks okay up in the water, but the rocks are up under. And so this is what you need to find out, guys. Here's the thing you need to find. Listen at this now. And he sounded and found it to be 20 fathoms. Now, I begin to look, of course, as the preacher and as a teacher to you guys. I want to find out what is a fathom. That's what I want to know. What's a, what's a fathom? So I went and looked it up. And this is what it is. A fathom is, um, will be equivalent to six feet. Okay? Math people, I need you. So fathom is six feet. And so they said it sounded and found it to be 20 fathoms. So we saying 20 times six. Come on, math mutations, help me out. 20 times six equals 120. Because what we say is six times zero is zero. Six times two is 12. 12, um, 12 with a zero at the back is 120. Good math, guys. So we have 120 feet. So when he first sounded, it was 120 feet away. Now, we did some more math because there are three feet in one yard. Three feet is in one yard. So if three feet is in one yard, 120 feet will equal, so I divided 120 into uh, I divided three into 120 and you came out with 40 yards. So they, his word would say, if I was to put it in our terms today and he sounded and found it to be 40 yards out. We 40 yards away from it. So for you guys that love sports football, think about it. They're on the 40 yard line. Oh, and the end zone is what we're trying to get in. That's pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and jump. I can swim 40. I can get there. But see, here's the thing about it. We're not sure what we're looking at there and you don't know what's in the water. See, God would attach tethers to you and me. A tether is something that is of value to you where you won't do a stupid thing. There are a lot of people who check out on life, but because they have a loved one or a child that depends on them, that's the tether that keeps them here. You will tell your boss what you think about him in a foreign language that um, a Christian shouldn't be speaking if you could, if you could pay your bills another way. But because God said, I'm going to tie to you your bills the way you cannot pay your bills if you leave this job, you can't speak tongues to this man. You got to just look at him and speak it in your head. And it's had to say, God, counting that too. Straighten your mind up, people. And so what you'll find out, so he's saying 40 yards out. And so what the word says, he says, and when they had, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it to be. 15 fathom. So what we did, same math principle. A fathom is how long? How, how uh, many feet, guys? Six feet. And so we said six times 15. And when we did six times 15, it totaled out guys, six times 15. And we equaled that out, guys, which was 93. And when we equaled that out, um, fathoms, that end up about, about went from, went from 40 yards to about, 35 yards, 30 yards, so in that bracket. Do the math. Correct me. Yeah, that's your homework. Do your math. Correct me. So that's what we had here. So what they was doing is sounding out. Now, who was the ones that's doing the sounding out here? Because it's very important that you know this. Very important that you know this. Who was doing the sounding out? Well, let's go back in verse number 27. It says, about midnight, the shipmen. They are very important people right now in this study that we have. The shipmen deemed that they drove near, um, near to some country. And then they was the ones doing the counting and the account of how far they were out. So they're looking closer. We don't got to look closer. We don't be at 14 days out here 
in this um, storm. And so anything that looked like um, we can get ourselves done, let's get gone. Let's hurry up and get out of here. And that is very important that that where there is going on, guys, that you understand what they're looking at. So they think they're figuring this thing out. We're close. We're now, you know, guys, we're 120 feet out. We're now 93 feet out. We're close now. We're close down there looking. Now, look at what took place here. Again, and this is what I was trying to tell you guys. He says, then, then fearing lest we should have Falling upon rocks, they cast forth anchors out of the stern and whist for the day. See, they've been in battle all this time. Sometime God will set a situation to put you in a barrier. Fearing that they're going to run up on rocks, they said, we're going to stop right here, 15 fathoms out. That's pretty close. We can get um, on a boat and we can get there from here. We're looking at about 40 yards, 35 yards, 30 yards in that case. And you're looking, guys, remember, the storm is raging. So that's going to be a lot of tossing. And if you're not careful, you're going to get off the big boat onto a small boat where the storm can better, um, can more maneuver you and throw you around or flip the boat over. So even if they was that close, it was still big danger that they were in. And so they deemed, guys, they feared that they're going to run on the rocks. What they did is they threw down the anchors. Let's anchor it right here. We're not going to let this take us no further out. This right here, we're close to land. We can see where we're at. We look like some, um, it looked like I could see light at the end of the tunnel. You need to hear from God because that light could be a train. So you need to understand exactly what it is that God is putting forth here to you. And so you need to keep that in mind. And so, um... And so you will find out that in the midst of all of this, that's exactly what they was doing, guys. They were fearing that they were going to run into the rocks. I told you, as you get closer to land, well, that means you're closer to land. And land is up under the water, too. You don't just come up to the land sitting right there. It's going to come up on you. And so that's why you'll see big ships. They will stay out um, or, or they will build a pier going out to where the boat is at. Or you will find the boat will stay out there and they would then put people on little boats and bring them in and so it looks like this is a good move but God is saying sit still hear me and when God speaks to you this is very very important when God speaks to you I don't care what look like is safety don't you dare move you keep yourself still when God has told you to stay still I don't care what it look like and everybody else may be abandoning ship but you got to sit still and know what it is that God has told you to do. You got to stand firm and believe God. And so that's what will happen. They are fearing that they're going to get some rocks. I'm um, going to hit rocks and stuff, which then mean this thing is going to ship is going to crash. We then sink and everybody is swimming for themselves. Trying to in this storm. This is not just clear water where you just jump in and say, I can swim um, 40 yards or either um, 30 yards. No, it's much worse than that, guys. You got a storm, which means the current is going in and out and the current take you way out to the ocean. So you got to believe God and trust God every step of the way there. But listen here, guys. Now, here's where it got very interesting to me. This is where it's got interesting because now I want you to go back. Remember, remember here, guys, in verse number 30, I'm going to say 27. Who was it that was checking that ding that they was close and the one that was um, getting everything ready, it was the shipment. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, verse number 30. And as the shipmen were about to about to flee out of the ship, what were they about to do? Listen what the shipmen are going to do. Now, we, we're going to come to who the shipmen are. It says, and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had, lift, when they had let down the boats into the sea on the, on the color of and thought they would have cast uh, cast anchors out of the foreship. See, here's what was taking place. They were the ones looking at this. They was lowering the boat. And they wanted to lead everybody to believe. They're lining this up so they can get people out of this. But they was looking out for their own selves. They were trying to get out of the boat. They was trying to get away from this thing. Now, look at, I'm going to show you something very important here. Now, look at verse number 30 again. Look at verse number 30 again. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat um, boat into the sea, they had already let down the boat into the sea, and undercover uh, as thought they would have 
cast anchors out of the force ship. So they had everybody believing they was getting, we're going to put these anchors down and get um, stable. But they was trying to get the boat down so they could get away. They didn't care about what was on the boat. What they cared about was themselves. But before I go any further, keep that in mind, Lord. They didn't care about what was on the boat. They care about themselves. I want you to go back to verse number 10 and 11. Because it's very, very important that you look at verse number 10 and 11. It's, it, it ties in. This is why I laugh. Now, look at this right here. Verse number 10, Acts 20, 17, it says, And said unto them, Sirs, I proceed. Now, this is Paul speaking to the shipmen. And said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with much hurt and much danger. And um, much hurt and um, much damage, um, not only of the landing and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, now Paul already don't warn them. Remember, you are a servant of God and you're trying to tell these people something, but they don't want to hear nothing you have to say. Nevertheless, the centurion believed that now who believed them? That's very important. The centurion believed the master, uh, the master and the owner of the ship. More than those things which were spoken by Paul. So we have a contrast here. You have a man of God that's trying to tell you something. But you have a person that's been doing the thing a long time. I don't care how long a person been doing the thing. When God speaks. When God speaks, you should obey it. Now you say, well, how do I know if God is speaking? The centurion knew Paul. The centurion knew the conversation that Paul had with God. The centurion knew the relationship that he had with God. But the centurion chose to believe. The shipmaster. Everything looked good when it started. Now go back. Go back to 30. So he pretty much knew. The centurion knew Paul. But they listen to the. Sometimes the people because they know, I've been, know a thing. I've been doing the thing for a while. They get very arrogant. They get very, very arrogant. And because you haven't done a thing, they act like you don't supposed to know a thing. Let me tell you something. There is a difference. A mighty difference between wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is something you obtain by learning. Sitting down, be it um, um, book sense, common sense, or be it um, bought sense. It can be one of those three. Book sense, you sit down. Common sense, God just give you that. Book sense, you sit down and you learn and you advance your, broaden your mind. Bought sense is you keep doing a stupid thing and you end up in court and paying for it again and again and again. Sooner or later, you get tired of paying for it, you learn. Um, and so what you have is that situation right there. See, since there's just things you can learn or you can get belt sense. Right, when I was a baby, we, we learned quickly. When I was younger, a hard head make a soft behind. If mama say don't do it, right, listen, you can. So the point that's being made there, that's what you're looking at. So again, we're looking at the shipmen, but they was doing is making it look like they was in the best interest of the people. You are the ones that got us into this mess. There are people that will get you in a mess and then leave you right there. There are people that will talk you into a thing and then will not take the consequences of what they're doing. It's easy for you to bet when you're betting with somebody else's money. But what happens when it's your money you got to put down? And you have to realize when a person is telling you what they will do, but then you tell them to do it. They will look at you and tell you, well, if I was you, I'd do this. You ain't me. Half of y'all listen to people that is not you. And they do a foolish thing. And what end up happening is you end up in a mess. But what you need to do is trust God and believe God every step of the way, knowing that God will deliver you. Knowing that God will bring you through. You have to believe God. And so again, you're looking at it in verse 30. As the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship. They were going to leave the people. And so going back to what I was going to say. There are people in the house of God. You have hirelings. And then you have shepherds. And hireling is somebody that's only there for the dollar. The moment you get into crisis in your life, they don't care about you. Many people tie themselves into a church because of the fame of that church. Or this church got a nice groove about it. Or the church got a big name to it. I'm not knocking big churches. I trust God that we will grow. But is the leader lined up with the word of God? Because in a crisis time in your life, when you really go through a crisis, a hireling is not going to be there for you. A hireling is only there for what you can do for them. And when you cannot do anything else for them, a hireling will then leave you alone. But a shepherd... A shepherd will be one in the night 
when things are dark, a shepherd will come and meet you where you are. A shepherd will hold your hand with you, pray with you, cry with you, explain things with you, sit down with you and just walk with you in this whole situation to get through this thing. That's what a shepherd would do because a shepherd loves the sheep. But a hireling don't care nothing about the sheep. My job is to get the sheep from point A to point B. And I don't care if a wolf grabbed one of them. I brought you 99. But God is concerned about the one. He is concerned about the one. And so they were about to leave them on that boat and left them with an impression that they was going to prepare things. But let me show you something, guys. It is nothing that God don't see. It is nothing that God don't see. So look at this. Look at verse number 31. That is very important. Listen what Paul said. Paul said unto the centurion. See, Paul spoke to somebody with authority. Listen what he said. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers. Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Let's break this down. So Paul said to the centurion. These people ran off at the mouth when I told you not to do this. And they talked you into moving. And now it's left up to you what we're going to do. Listen what he says. Now he said to the centurion, and just in case this centurion don't have this stuff together, a centurion was just one that was over a hundred. So he said to the, the, he said to the centurion, he said, then Paul said to the centurion, and a conjunction word to the soldiers. So Paul got everybody's attention and authority. Except these abide in the ship. You know the ones that's trying to leave everybody down. If they get off this ship, you're going to die. That's what Paul was saying. If they get off the ship, you're going to die. You ran off at the mouth and told the man it's, gonna, um, it's time to go or we can go. It's okay. Now sit here and bear the pain with us. You got some people that keep talking and put you in the pain. And the moment it go down, they leave you. But God said, since you talked them into it, you're going to go through it with them. You're going to go through every bit of it with them. And so that's what Paul was saying. Paul looked at this whole situation because if you notice, Paul was calm as can be the whole time through this. Paul made the statement. Paul looking at him and saying, sir, y'all should have listened to me. <laughs> First of all, he says, no, you shouldn't go because um, you're going to have great danger, damage to this ship. Um, you're going to have great danger that we're going to be into. Damage is going to happen to your ship. You're going to lose a lot of stuff if you do this. But yet these people with the big mouth talk them into moving because of their arrogance. And now that they're there, these soldiers are fighting for their life. The centurion is rethinking the situation he made. And now he get a second chance because now these ones that talk them into it is now trying to run. And what is taking place is Paul is saying, well, hold on, wait a minute. If you get off this ship, if these guys are able to get off this ship, all of us going to die. And so I can assure you that was an incentive program for that soldier, for them soldiers, plural, and for that centurion. I'm sure that centurion was waiting on this. Oh, no, bro. no, 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 brother. You ran off at the mouth the first time and I listened to you. Shut up and sit your tail down because those soldiers had the authority to kill you. Now, the sea might kill you. You might get off this ship and you might make it. But if you move again, I promise you, you ain't going to live. And so they had to make a choice. And sometimes you do a thing when God told you not to do a thing. And God said, no, I'm not delivering you out of it. A hard head makes a soft behind. You will learn today. So what you will find out is God's word. God's word, saints, is truly a blessing for us. Understand, you can't listen to what everybody has to say about a thing. Paul said unto the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship. Who? The shipmen. Except they stay on this boat with us, ye cannot be saved. God has measured on that boat down to the weight of every single person on it. And if one person get off this boat, the weight is off. And this thing, we, we're not going to be saved. So you got to keep your tail right here. God says, I want you to stay right here with my child. You picked at them, you laughed at them, you set them up, and now you caught up in the thing. No, you're going to stay right here and go through it with them. It's an amazing thing to see people go through a thing. A saved person going through the same thing as an unsaved person. It's a thing to see when you have a savior. You know they have already provided the way for you. Have already kept you. So what you have to do is trust God and believe God every step of the way. Now you're going to be able to find out exactly. Look at something I want you to see. Well, 
Next week, we will get into Bible study on this because I want to show you something. I want to show you something. So Paul no longer, so you need to quit speaking to people, quote, an authority or a people that seem to have authority and speak to people with authority. The centurion, the soldiers, they had authority. The ship people knew a, little, a few things and it was obvious they didn't know much. But what you have to do is trust God. Believe God. Who knows more than him? Who has more authority than him? Then stand firm with God and God will surely send you through. Father, we thank you. We bless you and honor you for the night that we have had in Bible study. I pray that something was said for your servants, Lord, that we may be able to hear and apply your word to our lives. Oh, Father, do not let your word slip away from us. Do not let us be so foolish, Lord, as to mishandle your word to where it's put down somewhere and we forget about it. But help us to take that word, Lord, and apply it to our lives. Let us to dig deep, Lord God, and see how this applies to us. Oh, Father, my Father, bless the saints that they will not let the devil take advantage, Lord, of the moment that this word may be misplaced. That is to say, Lord, what the Spirit is saying to them. Let them write it down. Let them write down in detail what the Spirit says so they can go back and rehearse what he is saying to them, for them, about them. Help us, Lord, that we may continue to grow in your will, Lord, word and way. Now, I pray, Father, that something was said that was beneficial to your saints today, that they are able to apply this word to their lives. For, Lord, truly, there's a lot of nutrients in, Lord. There is a lot, Lord God, of promise in your word if we just obey. So bless the saints, Lord, that they may have heard what was said tonight, put it in their hearts, apply it to their lives, and see you be the same God as yesterday, today and forevermore. That is, you did not leave Paul in a crisis situation and you surely would not leave us. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. Now, I believe by faith that you have honored this request for I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, are you someone out there and you have come across this page or you have been following us and sitting with us and listening and you know God has spoken to you today? Matter of fact, you may have even found yourself listening a couple of times and feel the Spirit of God touch you and realize it's something about this ministry or this teacher or this teaching that's touching you. And you say, Lord, I hear you and I want to right now get in line with your word. So if you are one who do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to know him as your Lord and Savior, I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. But first of all, let me reach out to this one, the one that once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you turned and walked away. And now you would like to rededicate your life to him. I want to walk you through God's plan of rededication. Come, walk with me, guys. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that you have opened before me. I take full advantage of the opportunity by, by my own free will walking through this door. I openly, Lord, ask you to forgive me for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I ask you, Jesus, if you will cleanse my life, cleanse my heart, I will serve you all the days of my life. So, Lord, I openly, Lord, stand according to your word and say, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of my life now. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. He lives in my life now. I accept you, Jesus, as being both my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, if you will put that down in the comment section, guys, we would just like to celebrate with you and for you. Now, you may want to know now, what do I do, preacher? I've given my life to Christ. What do I do next? Find you a good Bible-believing church and sit down and learn in the Word of God. Now, you may be like, I'm not sure about this. I don't know of one. I'm angry at churches right now. I don't want to do this. Whatever the situation, stay right here with us. Continue growing with us in the word and to God strengthen you to where you can be, you can forgive those that may have hurt you or you're strong enough to understand God's word to where you can sit with other saints. It is good to have fellowship with the saints. You say, well, I do. I believe that. And I like being here with you guys. I want to be a part of this ministry, but I live in another state or I live a long way. 
can I be a part of this ministry? Yes. Two things we ask of you. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, yeah. The next question asks is, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulations of this ministry? So as long as they line up with the word of God, you say, yeah, I'm willing to do that. Okay, then we say, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves people right where they are and work with them to get them to where Christ wants them to be. Now, if you will put that in the comment section, we will celebrate with you. Now, you guys say, well, I thank God for you. I want to come and visit Firm Foundation. Where are you located? We're located 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. If you can Google it, guys, we will be right in the place that Google says and we will be more than love to see your face. We are a shaky, handy, huggy type of people. There are no strangers that we meet. Everybody that comes there, they feel right at home. There's nobody that ever left out. You may say, well, guys, we want to see you. We want to see you guys. That I want to help support this ministry. How can I go by doing that? Well, right here, there's a QR code where you can give. If you want to send it snail mail, the same address. Um, 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville, North Carolina. Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry. All, all proceeds will be used for the kingdom of God and his purposes. No shady business. Guys, we look forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel. Um, Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Um, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Remember, guys, to all of the brethren of Firm Foundation, this Saturday, 9 a.m., we're going to be in the house of God, the men of God. We're coming together with a strategy session of going out and growing the ministry and growing the kingdom. So guys, look forward to seeing you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.